Good afternoon. Um, thank you for joining me today. I have uh, an interesting message to give here because this is more of a clarification on the past three videos that I've done. And the reason why um, I think it's important for you to see this is because understanding the system that we're in, understanding the planetary bodies that are approaching that you've seen that Universal News Media has done such an amazing job in showing you through the FAA weather cams. These uh, celestial bodies have been coming here for many thousands and thousands of years. In Nibiru terms, as far as tracking time, they called it a shar. Now, according to the Sumerian text, that would be approximately 3,600 years, which would make perfect sense because, see, everything within our celestial bodies, everything within our universe moves in derivatives of nine. So for instance, our calendar, the original calendar of Earth used to be 360 days, six and three adding up to nine. 3,600 years, six and three adding up to nine. Everything adds up to nine in some way, shape or form. So when you see nine and you see 1,260 days in the Bible added up, it's nine. Everything, including the amount of fish that the apostles pulled up in the net adds up to nine. All of these things are giving you messages about the mathematical workings of the system that we're in. Just trying to keep this in a language that is simple for everybody to understand. So I'm going to draw you a little diagram here and that's going to help you understand what happened to this planet and where we live today. Now I apologize again in advance for the fingers, so this makes it a little bit difficult for me to draw. But I'm going to use the whiteboard again today and this is going to be uh, a bit of an illustration as to what Earth used to be. So first of all, as many of you know that there are giant's bones that have been found all over Earth. All over. In these massive mounds and the Smithsonian Institute has done an amazing job at covering that up and making sure that these bones go away. The Catalina Island bones um, off the coast of California are significant, including the tools that were found with copper that was refined so great that we don't even know how it was refined to be so strong. Um, that, um, that these bones are very large. We're talking femur bones of the leg, the largest bone in the body, that are staggering sizes that would have men being anywhere from 12 feet and in some cases 36 feet. And scripturally in the book of Enoch, it speaks of giants even larger. So this would have been a time where we don't have the evidence of those, but they would appear as just being rocks because it would be petrified at that point. So it would be stone. So the petrification of wood being turning to stone as well, well, bones would take place. The same thing would take place with bones. That's just a, a compression that under a tremendous amount of pressure that these things would take place. So what could cause things to become petrified? The theory that petrification comes from millions and millions of years of age is just nonsense. The petrification comes from pressure, as though you took something and, and dropped it down to thousands and thousands of feet in the water in the ocean. It would be under a tremendous amount of pressure and compress it tighter and tighter and tighter to the point that the, that the piece of matter itself became like stone. So I'm going to do this illustration for you right now. I'll try to hold this up. Um, the Earth at one time was much bigger than it is. So think of um, just typical mankind, us right now, that we were once much bigger. And the reason why we're bigger, the, that we were bigger, is because our support system could sustain the size. So think of this as the reptilian side of our brain, right? We have a reptilian component to our bodies, that we have literally a portion of our brain that is considered reptile, that it thinks and reacts like a reptile. And this is the, the sinful component that is in us, that we can see somebody killed with an unblinking eye, just like a snake would watch its young be eaten by prey with an unblinking eye. So that component exists in us. The source of the Father also exists in us, which is love, which is why you have compassion, which is why you have that within you as well. So just like if you took a snake that was a baby and you put it in a small cage, it would not grow to be larger than the cage or the, the, the 
tank or the aquarium that you put it in could sustain. It would only grow to the size that that cage could actually sustain. If you put them in a larger one, it would grow to be bigger. Well, think of us as being the same, that at one point this planet was inhabited by mankind, a much larger version of us because the planet itself was bigger. Just as Genesis describes that it was all water, it was the deep blue, and then the land formed on top. So imagine that the entire planet was covered in land and it had rivers and lakes and seas, not oceans, but seas. So think of a large lake. And it spoke of having three of these seas and three of these rivers. Now imagine that underneath was all water. So we had a planet that was primarily made of water with land floating on top of the water and not a bunch of breakup of land. So imagine a planet that was all land with a couple rivers and a couple seas. And it was about this big. Now imagine if this planet was impacted by something very large, another planet, or perhaps a small sun-like planet. So something that actually is filled with plasma that is um, extremely hot and creates an energetic field impacted this and broke this planet in half like a shell. So imagine this. Can you see this? So this broken half shell here. Now we have some water here that's still here and because underneath this land is water. You following this? So now the vacuum of space and the mere fact that there is rotation, these get pulled in the rotation and this land here cracks around this water here because this is all water. And then what you end up with is a smaller planet that has those broken pieces. And now you have a smaller version of Earth. So now this is the process of what happened to us. Now, the remaining water that would have been inside of this entire system was ejected out. Now that water that was ejected out became comets and followed the gravitational pull, the net pull of the planetary body and the planetary system that impacted us. Because as we know, let's look at this. We have the sun here. And then we've got planets. So we have planets. Now obviously I'm not creating the rotation. So these planets all have a rotation around the sun. So all of these planets have a rotation around the sun. Now there's nine lined up here, okay? So Earth being this one right here, which is the third rock from the sun. Now. In the Sumerian text, they count Earth as being the seventh. So because they're counting from the outside in, they're counting from out here. They are talking the seventh planet they called Earth. But let's imagine here for a second, you've got Mars and you have Jupiter. Now in between, the spacing between each one of these planets is pretty precise. And there's a pretty big gap in between here, Mars and Jupiter, which is what is called the asteroid belt. Right, so we have this broken asteroid belt all around here. That broken asteroid belt has just been announced, although they said it was just floating debris, has just been announced that they have actually proven that it is the remnants of what used to be a planet. Well, the reality is, remember the scenario that I showed you of Earth being impacted? It is the remnants of what was the other half of Earth and maybe even a larger portion than half. There's no, really way, there's no way for us to really understand just how much of Earth was taken away during this impact. But the Earth was most certainly impacted. But imagine this now. If you think about Scripture for a second, and I'm just writing this out loud and giving you these things so you can understand the visions that I've seen and then understanding those visions as translated by ancient texts. That Earth used to be right here where the asteroid belt is and that it was actually moved. So let's for imagine for a second that if you grew up here on, on the furthest most planet, you grew up on Neptune out here. 
or you are uh, on Pluto, one of those planets that have a much longer uh, year. So one year around the sun, a one-year-old could be 50 years old. They could be a 50-year-old person because they had lived 50 years, but only a one-year-old would be a 50-year-old. Hence now Melchizedek being a little child but spoke like an intellectual man, full-grown. So at this point in time, you have Adam and Eve and all of the characters of the Bible that are spoken of that live to be 900 years old. That's because they could have lived to be much older here. And during this impact and the broken earth, it was moved and our orbit was altered dramatically. So this orbit and the earth right now still wobbles, that there is a regression and this is why we have different ages where the sun will begin rising in a different age. It'll under a different sign in the cosmos. So with that, we have this asteroid belt, which is made up of possibly our ancestors. This asteroid belt probably contains ancestors that we had long ago. Now, what made this happen? So the Nibiru system itself, the planet is called the planet of the crossing and for good reason, the cross because its orbital system operates in this way. It's way down here and it orbits the opposite direction and it comes through like this. And this orbital system takes 3,600 years. And it comes through and it crosses the path, the path of all of these planets. So Mars being uninhabitable, other planets being pocked like and also the moon being smashed with bits and pieces and you see so many pock marks on it. The moon might be a device and I believe it to be so, but at the same time that doesn't mean that it doesn't have to withstand the tail of Nibiru because Nibiru is not just one planet, it is a planetary system. In fact, as described in these texts, it looks quite a bit like a cross. Not only does it cross our path, but it looks like a cross having one larger planetary system here. And it has its own suns, its own plasma light suns, which is why some people have taken photos of a second sun in the rising in the southern part of the southern hemisphere. So what is believed to be, based on all of the different uh, texts that I've read, is that one of the suns, let's imagine that this top one right here is a was a sun, that it is what impacted Earth. It is what shattered Earth. It impacted Earth and entered where you see the Gulf of Mexico today. And this is why the Earth would actually have a hot core and that the core of the Earth and the Earth would have this electrical field around it causing this grid. So some might say that this was caused by these not so benevolent beings, which is very much the case if you actually go by the text because it describes this as being intentional. It describes it as being a war. And Earth, when it was here, had a different name. It was called Tiamat. And when it came here, it was no longer called Earth. It was called Ki, which means Earth, which is where you have the name of the Anunnaki and Ki, which means Lord of Earth. Prior to Enki having the name Enki, prior to him coming to Earth, his name was E.A., which means Lord of Water, which is why he used water to be able to blast his way through the asteroid belt in order to come to Earth. So this took place long before even Enki and Enlil, but did take place with the system of Nibiru. So just as this little description, I thought this might help you and understand some of the things that I've been discussing. And this way, you can play it back and, and rewind it and get a better understanding of what I've said. But these things are very real. In fact, I don't know whether you've noticed, but Hollywood Columbia Pictures, a studio I used to work for, has made a movie called Nibiru. And there's a trailer out there. I haven't really paid too much attention to it, but someone made me aware of it today. So, obviously, they're very aware of what is going on. And the attempt to speak to your consciousness and make you aware of these things, the attempt to, you know, for Trump talking about a space force, these things are coming. And the presence of the folks from Nibiru will be here. You will see them 
they will be a part of this society for a period of time. Let's remember that that orbital period takes 3,600 years. So there's going to be a period of time where they're around. And there might even be a period of time where Nibiru actually controls the Earth's magnetic pull. Not only controls that, but stops its orbit around the sun entirely. And its suns then begin to be our sun for a short period of time. So these last parts that I just spoke to you, these are just speculation based on the visions that I've seen that I saw long ago before I even knew what Nibiru was. So when I tell you that I've been shown these things, I was shown these things in great detail. In great detail, as though I was being walked through a museum of great antiquity. And it wasn't just that that I was shown. I was shown scriptures and I was shown people who they are, where they come from, why they're there, what their names are, how powerful they are, how powerful they are, uh, they are, where they're from. So many of these things I got to see. So you could imagine my amazement as I picked up these ancient texts and began to read the stories in very vivid form that I had already seen in a vision. So I just brought that to you and the portion that I showed you about the earth being impacted and that the transfer of the Earth's position, the transfer of the, of the Earth's position is not spoken of in any of these texts. But I believe that to be the case and that's why the ages altered because the closer you are to the sun, the faster you would age because your, ear, your years are shorter. So in this, everything being math, right? This is what you have to realize. Sacred geometry is all about math. Everything that is here, where we're at, which is why we call it a matrix, is about math. We live in a coded system. So I just thought that these might help you in your exploration of these truths. And I'm probably going to do another video today, but I just wanted to get this out to you so you'd be able to, to see the things that some of the people have been asking questions. And just let me know in the comment section below if you think that this has been helpful for you understanding. I appreciate it. Have a wonderful day and I hope to see you later. I love you very much.